So let's get started. Welcome, welcome everybody to our uh, Destination Diamond and Double Diamond weekly call. These fabulous people here on the call are all paid as emeralds and diamonds working towards going diamond and double diamond. So who better for us to ask to join us than double diamonds, Gabriel and Stephanie Smith, from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for having us on here. Yeah, this is so cool. So we met you guys, Cami Dempsey. You guys are uh, underneath Cami Dempsey. And we met you guys on a couple's Zoom. Uh, I don't know, five, six months ago, maybe? It was, it was prior to conference. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, and we got to just chat as couples on how to work our business. And mm -hmm. I remember saying to John, they're a cool couple. Like, I really like them. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> I just you. felt like a connection to you guys. And then we met each other at, you came up to us, Gabriel, at, um, after Cammie Dempsey's, Cammie yeah. had like a meet and greet thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we met you guys. Actually, uh, y'all were sitting... It, it was in the hotel in it was the in the lobby. big nice hotel in the lobby right next to the center and uh yeah. we were going in to meet cammy and i saw y'all sitting over there and i was like hey we know them from the zoom those are the interests so we went over and said hey and we hit it off right away we loved you guys from the second we met you yeah we totally love you guys and so you know i want you guys first of all to um should we just jump right into their story or should we go around and let everybody share who they chose it's up to you. It's your. It's Let's do that first. Let's do that. I give you guys thirty seconds to. We'll go left to right. So hold tight, Gabe and Steph, to share your story, because really we're highlighting you guys tonight. We really are, and we're cool. super excited that you guys took time out of your busy schedules to uh, to to join us. So thank you so much. So everybody got a, uh, an opportunity to bring somebody on to this Zoom, a special somebody that they believe in their team as an up and coming just. Just see a lot in them um, really just such great characteristics for great leadership and so each of us chose one so John I guess your top left okay. and so you go ahead and share who you chose all right so Patrick is up there on the top left otherwise known as PJ for short and you know I'm really excited to bring Patrick we've been working a little bit together um, Patrick I'm not sure how long you've been on but on the team but uh, we're, we're super excited. Uh, Patrick joined by himself, so he's not, he's not with, uh, with a lady like a lot of us are. And so I'm really proud of Patrick, um, you know, for, for, I guess, being brave as a guy, you know, because sometimes there's that stigma in this business that's given that, that this is sort of a chick or a girl business. And it's not. I mean, Gabriel can talk to that after a while. And so I am super pumped. Um, I have a background in, you know, in physical, uh, you know, lifting and stuff like that. And Patrick is super into that. And so he's busting open a whole category of, of working with, with people who are into physical fitness and stuff like that. So we want Patrick to say a few words. Too. Sure. You can say, you can, you can speak up PJ and, and maybe share how long you've been in. Uh, I'm just shy of a month. So I think the third of May will be one month. Um, I don't know. What do you want me to say? <laughs> what, do you, what are you most excited about? What are you most excited about with this business? Uh, for me, really, it's just an opportunity to help people be a better them, whether that's, you know, all the opportunities that we present, whether it's health and wellness products or whether it's a chance to have the financial freedom that we all hope to have. So that's just all around, no matter what it is, I think it's an exciting company to be a part of and it's a bunch of good people so far so awesome well I'm super excited uh, we're coming up to Patrick's to do a launch party uh, this, this Friday, this Friday, Friday night Friday, yeah. and it is gonna be way cool so we're gonna do it up thanks thanks for joining us tonight Patrick absolutely thanks for the invite yeah and I chose Becky Fenstermaker is she on where are you Chica I know she was on finishing up with the team meeting so I'm not for sure if she's joined us yet I don't Unless this one's it down here. Are you there? If you're there, speak up. Okay. I'm thinking that. So we'll wait and see if she shows up in a little bit here. How about um, Stacy During? Who did you choose to bring on, and why did you choose your person? Hey guys, um, I chose Miss Sarah Stefan to come on, and um, 
The reason is, is I absolutely love, love, love Sarah's story. Um, she actually, well, she could tell her story, but she tried to first go around with It Works and had a lot of life happen um, and actually, you know, decided that it maybe wasn't the right timing for her. And uh, then uh, her and I connected about, um, you know, a couple months after that. And she said, I'm ready to give it another go. And um, so here she is again uh, for a second round. And, and, you know, she, if you haven't met Sarah, she has the biggest heart out there. Um, she just had a new little baby again, is like a busy mama. Um, but she has a big why in front of her too, um, uh, for her and her family. And anybody that's around there she's totally contagious totally um i just see a lot a lot of potential in sarah and i tell her that like every time that we talk um and she she sees it too just needs the encouragement so i thought this would be a great um zoom for her to jump on and and really pull in all the goodness that you leaders are going to share with her too so awesome and yeah, and she's on. I don't know if she has baby by her. Or, I know she's she's hidden on the video right now, so I'm not sure <laughs> if That's she can right. herself or not. Yeah, I can. I can talk. I just can't be visual right now. <laughs> <laughs> Might be nursing or something. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay, how about Miss uh, Melissa Rice? Who did you choose and why? Hello. Um, I chose Michelle Albanese, a.k.a. Michelle Benice. Um, I think as John so affectionately nicknamed her. But um, I love Michelle. I have seen um, so much growth in her. She's just one of those that I look for in a distributor who has grit, you know, has had a lot of life happen to her and just – never lets it get in the way and just finds a way to overcome her obstacles. And I think, you know, in this business that is huge. So, um, you know, I, I, she's red and I'm yellow. So we're such a good match for each other. I've actually gotten a little more red because of her and she's gotten a little more yellow. We were together this weekend and we were like, Oh my gosh. So, um, it's really cool. And she's just such a great partner to have in this business. And I'm just super excited to have her here. I know how much she looks up to you guys and, um, so I just jumped at the opportunity to, to bring her on and have her work with us. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, Michelle, you want to say hi? <laughs> she even brewed some coffee to stay awake because usually she goes to bed. It's, it's an hour later Eastern. So thank you, girl, for hopping on. <clears throat> okay, let's keep moving here. Let's see. Um, Alyssa, how about you, honey? Who did you choose and why? I chose Miss Kelsey Brandt. And the reason I chose Kelsey is because she was my number two girl that said yes to me when I, you know, first started this business and she's been with me ever since, you know, it's been since last January and she, you know, never gives up and she's so coachable. You know, she's always willing to learn something new. She works really hard. I mean, she works a full-time job. When we first met, she was, I think, working like almost three jobs I mean, she was really working her butt off and she's always, you know, she found... Like she made time when it worked for her and she's been going, you know, and she's so driven right now. She's got her goals in front of her and I just see really big things happening for her. So I'm super excited. And it was truly an honor when you guys asked us to pick somebody. Um, it's, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to choose, but I knew right away that I wanted her to be that person. Awesome. Cool. Welcome. Welcome, Kelsey. Glad you could join us. All right. How about, let's see, I got to think of who the leaders are. Hel Heather. How about you, Heather? Who did you choose and why? All right, so I chose Jill Puffer, and she is one of the ladies that was one of the first ones to join me, and she's also had a lot of life happen to her very, very busy mama. Um, and, you know, I've seen her change and grow through this and learn to believe in herself again and kind of start to go through making those um, small little goals again and start. She got the vision very early. Do you remember that, Liz, at the first One Team, One Mission that we brought Jill to um, in January, February? She got that vision very early and really deserves it and wants it for her family. So um, I see her as a strong leader. I think it's just a matter of finding her own. 
It's awesome. Cool. I love it. Well, welcome, welcome. Jill, did you want to say anything, Jill, to that? Oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> you gotta love it when the when the audio is not working. That's right. I think I heard you say I don't think so. I didn't have anything to say. So thank you for joining us, Jill. We're glad to have you. Okay, Stephanie Grodzik, did you get a chance to uh, to um, invite somebody on? Okay, maybe Steph's away from the phone at the moment. We could do we could do Becky. Okay, She's I chose out. Becky Fenstermaker. So Becky, wave your hand. I chose Becky. You know, um, there's times in your life when you pray, 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 pray hard for uh, distributors, and you're always praying for distributors, but praying for people to come and cross your path that will be that will add value to your team, that will be somebody who has your back, that will be someone who's not a energy sucker but rather uh, someone who really brings a lot to the table. And Becky was my godsend. She was definitely someone who the Lord knew I needed in a big, big way in, my, in that time of my life. And she has been nothing but a total um, leader, uh, a total student. You talk about someone, you tell them what to do, and they go and do it. And she did every single bit of that. And she heads up so much, and she um, leads so much. She's a total overcomer. If you listen to her story, it's quite inspiring. And uh, her and I are, are high school uh, show choir uh, classmates. So I couldn't be more excited to, to have invited Becky to be a part of this. So Becky, did you want to say anything quick? Thanks for having me. And um, thanks for making me tear up already. <laughs> We do it's that. true. I mean it all. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So was there anybody else that invited someone? Like who invited Colleen? I'm thinking Sarah Stoddard. Where's Sarah Stoddard? Okay. There you are. So Sarah, why don't you, why don't you tell us who you invited and why? Um, hi. Yeah. So I actually invited Megan, um, but Colleen okay. and Megan are together, I believe. Um, I saw that she messaged me as I was hopping on here and I'm doing this from my phone with a battery that's almost dying so I couldn't message her back but um, I invited Megan when we talked about um, having or being able to invite somebody um, she was just placed on my heart um, you know it, again it's a hard decision there's a lot of people that I I would have loved to have my whole team on here mm -hmm. um, but she and I had um, we did a power hour over at crystals and we had a really nice time um, talking and I got to know her and, you know, I just see that she has a huge why in front of her. She's got an adorable son. Um, she doesn't want to go back to work. She's plugging in and working hard. And I just felt that she's a person that I needed to have on this call. So, um, and I'm glad that Colleen also gets to <laughs> listen in too. Um, so they both get to do this, but I'm just, I'm really proud of her and I'm proud of what she's doing and I'm excited to see what's, what's going to happen. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Now, is there anybody else that was a guest on that did not get a chance to shout out who they chose and why? Well, Steph's here. To Steph, did you have anyone for this one? Well, I have my hubby right here, but I invited a couple other girls on um, three, but they all had to work tonight. So I said that that's crappy. So our goal is to get them to quit their job so they don't have to work at night. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. That's awesome. We'll, we'll take Joe. We'll yeah. We'll take Joe. Joe. What up, Joe? Hey, are you guys going through a drive through yeah, we told the kids we had to run some errands, and we snuck off to Dairy well, Queen. Let's I'll take a I'll Joe. take a Oreo Blizzard, please. And I, I actually, got a peanut butter one. And I want to <laughs> see I want to see how you do a DQ Blitz, not a Ooh. Blizzard, a DQ Blitz. You know what? You're cutting in and out. I can't hear you. <laughs> DQ Blitz. <laughs> I don't have any on me. I didn't oh, bring my come shirt. Come on. Like I ran out of the house barefoot. I'm like, let's go quick before they see us. Awesome. All right. All right. Let's get this So underway. let's get this party started. We have our very, very special guests, like I said, Gabriel and Stephanie Smith. So if everybody else can mute out, so we can have a nice recording. You guys can unmute yourself, Gabe and Steph. 
And we are just, yeah, we are just so excited to have you guys be our special guests for tonight. And we really just want you to share your total journey. We want to know everything. So we want to know who you are, where you're from, how long you've been in, and I want to just hear it all. So go ahead and share. And then we'll stop you here and there and have questions. And if anybody else has questions too, we'll certainly let at the end them uh, ask questions as well. So these people are not on our team, although I would love to say that they are. They are total sidelines of ours. They're from Alabama, and we met them through a couple Zoom that Cami Dempsey had and fell in love with them. So first of all, you guys need to find them on Facebook because you will laugh. First of all, Stephanie has the most amazing uh, Facebook presence ever, and yes. Gabriel is flipping hilarious. <laughs> like. He, he will be seen in shopping carts in Walmart and oh, did you see all that sorts one? of singing in the park. I mean, he does crazy stuff. So they, their, their energy, their excitement, their living life, like total adventure, they are the epitome of that. So, okay, guys, no. take it away. Awesome. Do you want to start by introducing yourself or will you go first? Okay, well, I'm Stephanie Smith and I'm originally from Colorado. And I moved here when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I met him after college. Or I guess I was in college, but I met him yeah. and then I You were in your last here. semester. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I wish I'd met her when she got here when she was 15. I would have snapped her up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> uh, my name's Gabriel. I'm an attorney. And uh, I own a small law firm here in town where we live, just outside of Auburn, Alabama. We actually live in a little beady place called Beauregard. And it's unincorporated, but that's just what everybody calls it. I don't know why. And so I, I own a little law firm here. We were going to the same church. I met her. I said, oh, my goodness, she's so hot. I hope she loves Jesus because I'm going to go talk to her. So that was pretty <laughs> much how, how we started out. And then uh, I was in law school, and she um, was working as a hairstylist. And then we ended up starting a salon right when I started my law firm at the same time. And then that's – that's kind of where we were about five years five ago. Five years ago. Yeah, yeah, about five years ago. We've been married six years, four months, <laughs> and 21 days. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's been an you adventure. Very <laughs> yeah. She's like, I don't know. I've just been married for so long at this point. I, I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> so we've been, we've been enjoying life and we've been kicking it along for a while. And then, um, some, you know, life started happening. We got super busy with the businesses and we were kind of like ships passing in the night. Mm -hmm. And I, we both hated it. We talked about it. We're like, man, I miss you. We tell each other, man, I miss you. Wish we could hang out more. So um, that's kind of where Steph was kind of what sparked Stephanie. And I'll let her take over from there until the beginning part of the story and then I'll pick up. Yeah, like he said, we both started, um, he started his law firm and I started my salon at the exact same time. So I thought, and he thought, you know, it'd be a whole lot easier. We'd make more money. But in the long run, you have to stay there all day, every day. You can't leave, um, especially being a hairstylist. I couldn't, unless I was there, I really wasn't making money. I had yeah. people working for me, but the real money comes when you're actually doing it because you get 100% of it. So we were just literally just passing, you know, each other through the hallways. And he would be going to bed, and then I'd be going to work, and then vice versa. So it was crazy. And my family actually had a business and my grandpa had a stroke and it got shut down. So they were out of work, like the entire family. So we were having to take care of them and um, money got really tight. So we prayed about it. I shut my salon down. And so I thought, well, Gabriel's makes more money than mine does because, you know, with, you can get really large cases being an attorney. They don't come all the time, but it's better than, you know, what I was doing. <laughs> so um, I started working with him and that wasn't getting us any extra money so because he works off commission and um so we needed something else and this girl started following me on instagram and like spamming my account with all these before and after with pictures. the terrible stock photos <laughs> that you're not supposed to do just sure after the other yeah but yeah. it actually caught my attention believe it or not like some of them might be like oh that's photoshop oh that's photoshop oh wait that kind of looks like my belly so maybe i could use a wrap <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> I looked it up on YouTube and I came across Cami Dempsey's Black Diamond video and it like touched me and it made me cry. So I was like, I, I was really like, don't. Why are you crying watching <laughs> this lady on YouTube? I know, it was inspiring. It's part of my business. I'm <laughs> so I, um, 
I contacted her. And well, wait, I looked it up on Pinterest first and they said in order to be successful and it works, you got to have a good upline. I didn't know what that meant, but um, they said somebody at the top of the company, you want them to pour into you. <laughs> so I watched her video and then I contacted her and I was like, I don't know how this works. I don't know if I'm supposed to sign up under you or what, but I just messaged her and then we began going back and forth. And so we set up a video, no, a phone call. Yeah. And then um, I brought it to you. Yeah. She actually, when Steph hit her up, she sent in this long email and uh and then she they they did like an email and she came to me and she was like, I wanna send this to her. So we kinda sat down, talked a little bit, she sent her something and Cammy was like, Well, tell me more about yourself. She didn't just snap it up, she said, Tell me more about yourself. So Steph told her some more. And then she was like, I wanna do a phone call and I was like, I am not getting called up in some sort of con game here. Because I'm a lawyer and I'm too smart for this. And I'll just be real with you, lawyers are really cynical. Um, a little bit by nature, but mostly by the profession itself. People just teach you to be that way. And when she came to me, I was like, I, I didn't believe in multi-level marketing. I didn't believe in the business model. I didn't understand it. I guess I was still thinking about it, you know, the, the old school way, like Amway. So I had a lot of prejudice. It wasn't really based in fact or, you know, mm -hmm. anything. It was really based in fiction. So when, I, when she brought this up, I had to work through a lot of prejudice towards the business model because I was old school American. I wasn't 21st century. I thought, hey, big corporations are the way to go. Climb a corporate ladder, kick some money off the top, and sit on the rung. And that was the way that I thought business was supposed to work, which it's not. That was never the way it was intended to be. But that's the way we've done it for a while here in America. So that's all I knew. Well, when she said, hey, let's check this out, I was like, I don't want to talk to her on the phone. I just, oh, Steph. She was like, but I really am I'm really serious about this. And I've known God to work through my wife so many times. And even though I was so against it, that when she said, I feel like God's telling me that, I was like, you know, my little, my little siren goes off in my head. She's saying God told her. She's saying God told her. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, um, all right, <clears throat> we'll, we'll check it out. But I'm not going to talk to her on the phone because if I'm going to talk to somebody, I want to be able to look in their eyes to see if they're lying to me. So she was like, we can Skype her. I was like, if you can get her to Skype, face, FaceTime? Mm -hmm. Yeah, FaceTime. If, we, if you can get her to FaceTime us, I'll talk to her. So we get on the phone with her and it was just supposed to be like, I'm sorry, we get on the FaceTime with her and it was supposed to be like 10 minutes or mm -hmm. something. It ended up being an hour, and man, I was giving her the ninth degree. I mean, it was like she was on the freaking witness stand. If anybody else would have broken her that kind of question. And she was just <laughs> she answering. Loved it, <laughs> yeah, she was answering all of my questions, everything. And I was like, we'll try this one on for size, and here's this one coming in from left field. <laughs> and she was like, bam, bam, got it, tasted it. You were even trying to get a free wrap from her. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, let me tell you what, give me a free wrap. If that thing works, I'll sign up. She was like, you can buy one for $25. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> That's awesome. That but even Cammy Dempsey said you can buy one for twenty five dollars. Yeah. Cammy Dempsey did, was like, she was like, I'm not giving you a free wrap, and I was like, okay. She's like, those cost money. Yeah, and then uh, she was like, if you want to get a box, you can go on my website, but you need to sign up as a little customer first. I was like, hey, sign up as your little customer. <laughs> this was me. This was me starting off a little less than eight months ago. So that's where I was, and I've uh, come a long way since then. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the middle of it. She said, Gabriel, I used to live in a double wide. And she hit the little camera thing and the camera turned around. She said, look at my yard. And she showed me her yard and I was like, that's a nice pool. It's a nice waterfall. That's an amazing <laughs> two-story porch. Oh my gosh, that porch is bigger than my house. So she said, I used to own, I used to live in a double wide. Less than a decade ago, I started with It Works and this is where I am today. And it's because of It Works. I don't have side money. This is what It Works has done for me. And I was like, um, okay, I, I'm going to have to research this. I said, if we sign up, we'll sign up on September 1st. Yeah. <clears throat> At midnight. At midnight. I said, we'll sign up on September 1st because I was in the middle of remodeling the house and some other stuff, which I'm not a construction guy like John. So it was really <laughs> It was awful. interesting. That's yeah. another story. <laughs> yeah. uh, I ended up getting one of my clients that I do criminal defense work. And if you do criminal defense work, don't get your clients to help you with your house, even if you're trying to be nice. It's just not smart. So... <laughs> So that was a mistake, but we were working through it. I said, I want to do it on September 1st. I researched it hard for about two or three weeks. And Steph came to me with every kind of YouTube video. And I was like, I don't want to listen to these people trying to con me. I want the compensation plan. So we get uh, a hold of a compensation plan. It was actually outdated because that was the one that popped up on Google. But I read it and I was like, if these numbers are accurate, then this is a really solid business model. And in the end, it came down to, I still wasn't for sure, but she was so certain that I went with her heart uh, because I trust it more than mine. 
So I went with her hard on it and we started off. Uh, we signed up at like 1203, September 1st. We stayed up that night like, oh, we're signing up for our adventure. We're signing up. <laughs> and what, it, what hit me during that time was this is God answering my prayer, but I couldn't see it that way because it wasn't the, the way I thought it was going to be. Because back in 2014, I was working for a fairly large legal corporation uh, in the state capitol here. And I was handling some uh, high profile, high pressure kind of cases. And sometimes I was on the news, sometimes I was on radio. It, it was just, it was really stressful for me. And I wasn't really being compensated for it at all. Not like lawyers are supposed to be. So I was still running my law firm on the side, trying to make money. And uh, both of the jobs were mad at me for being with the other, but I had to do it for financial reasons. And I remember one day I was sitting there at my desk and I just laid my head down on the desk and I, I said, God, you know, I thought this is what I wanted. This is all I thought I wanted out of life. 29 years old. I've arrived. This is what I thought I wanted, but I was wrong. This is not what I want. I'm glad you let me experience it, but I'm kind of done now. What I would really like, if I could have anything out of life, God, I swear if I could have anything out of life. And it, this was like my breaking point. All I want is to be able to see my wife again. I know I need to make money to take care of my family because like, you know, the righteous man's got, you don't work, you don't eat. So that was it. I got to work. I got to take care of my family, but please let me do something with my wife where we can make money together. And I couldn't comprehend what that was going to be. I thought maybe she'll be like my office manager when I start my, uh, when I start my law firm back big, hard and heavy again. But that wasn't, that wasn't it. it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we were working so hard when I left there, God gave me an out. I ended up leaving the organization I was with, which I didn't see how that was ever going to happen. Started my law firm back. It was kind of slow to begin with for the first month, but then boom, God took care of a couple of issues that we had, got a couple of cases and we were back, back on track like I had been before. But my heart just wasn't in it. I, I couldn't find it again. And she came to me with this business we never thought that we were going to work it together. No. He said, oh, you can have little It Works money. You can I buy just shoes. <laughs> yeah, she, she reminds me of that a lot. Now that yeah. we're double diamond and it's over 5K a month. Yeah. I was, w the first month we were, we were rubies. You know, we made a good, like, I don't know. We made a few hundred dollars, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know, you, could, you keep that money and you just go bless yourself. You go get you some shoes. You get you those little toe socks that you like, the multicolored ones. You get you a new shirt, whatever. Oh she, and then the next month, I was like, how much did you make? Come here, sugar mama. Let's talk about daddy's power bill and the, the, the car payment. So she took care of that for and me. And Cammie's been working on him yeah. to do it with me. She's like, you know, I really think that you guys can do it together. Which I did the parties because I enjoyed that. Like, put me in front of a room of people and let me talk to them about something. I have a lot of fun. And I've never done sales in my life. I've always been in the service industry. Never, ever done sales. Hated the idea of doing it. You like talking to people. But I like talking to people, and I liked the product. So it wasn't really like sales to me. It was just kind of, I don't know. It just felt like I was telling people about something I liked, and they got excited, and then they bought it. And I guess that's really all sales is, unless you're the car salesman on a car lot. And that's what multi-level marketing is all about. You get out there, you get your friends and your family. You say, come to my house right now. Nope, come to my house right now. If you love me, you come to my house. I got to tell you about something that's going to save your life. So they come to my house and I'm like, hey, you don't want cancer? Take the greens. That was like all I needed to say. You need to be on the greens. They're amazing. I got everybody to buy the greens. Everyone tried to wrap. Everyone did the greens. I didn't know anything didn't about know anything any else. Products. And we signed up a bunch of distributors that had no idea how to get loyal customers or even what they were. So, so we had all these distributors. Like, I think we signed like eight in the first month, and we had like no full <laughs> customers. Yeah. We didn't get our fourth full customer till the 30th day, and it, we were praying for them. And I was like, Steph, I just don't know how we're going to get them. She was like, God will provide. It was the 30th day, mid afternoon. Even she was starting to sweat at that point. You were. A little bit. So she, <laughs> she was like, I was like, yeah. Hey. So one of her friends was walking out, and she said, Hey, I saw you guys doing the at worst thing. I was like, Yeah, that's cool. You know, most people were like, They're doing it worse. Quish push the buggy away. So <laughs> when she said that, I was like, talk to her. So she started talking to her and the girl was like, yeah, I want to sign up. And Steph was like, oh, that's great. She said, no, I'm here right now. Like, I want to sign up right now. She said, uh, uh, oh, okay. So we had to learn how to sign someone up on the phone at the interest of Kroger. So that was, uh, that was it. And from that point on, I think I really kicked in hard with her. I did a lot of the parties, but I kicked in hard in December. Uh, you know, December, 2015, we just passed it. And I said, okay, 
I know these good bonuses are probably going to happen because I've heard about these double good bonuses. And I figured I was running the numbers in my head. And I said, you know, if we could get that, that would really change our lives. R really, right now, that would be a life changer well, for us. Well, what is Cam explain to you the diamond uh, diamond bonuses. Yeah, the di no, the diamond the leadership. generational. Yeah, yeah leadership, leadership bonuses. That's I, when he really jumped on board and saw that money could be made. I got weak need. I, I was standing behind the couch and we had some of our, you know, we were Ruby at the time. We had some of our team in there. And Cammy was talking to us and she started explaining the leadership bonuses. And when she started talking about those, I was like, every, every minute I was like, stop, wait a minute. So if, and I'd put it in terms of dollars, if I had $1,000 in sales and I was getting this percentage and then I signed up three people, you're telling me I can make X amount of dollars. She was like, yeah. And I was like, hmm. that is so much money. There is so much money to be had in these types of companies. Yeah. I didn't realize how, I don't want to say easy. It's not easy, but it is easy compared to starting a law firm from scratch and trying to build it into a brand that everyone wants to buy into with their cases. It's easier than that. Um, it's probably easier than starting and maintaining your own construction company. I used to work for um, uh, an underground cable construction company. That was exhausting. It's easier than that. And it was doing something I loved. We were engaging our friends and family and their friends and family. Then we would teach them and they would get their friends and family. Once that started happening and it started rolling, we ended up, we were Ruby when we went to conference. Uh, we had almost no loyal customers in our group. We had a good many distributors, but not, not all of them were working, if you know what I'm saying. So when we, when we went to conference, it was going to be a miracle to go diamond at the end of that month. But the second he announced it, I just felt it in my heart. We're going to do it. We were already on like February 9th and there's only, there was 29 days in February because it was a leap year. So I was like, we got 20 days to go diamond. Steph was like, we're, we're going to do it. And I was like, well, we're going to try. <laughs> so <laughs> she's always had the faith. Um, I'm working on that. So we just started pushing really hard. We called and talked to everyone we knew. Forget Facebook messages. I was sick of that mess. I'm tired of people being able to say no to me without me being able to see them in the eyeballs. I started showing up at my friend's houses. I was serious about it. And we went diamond in less than three weeks. We went diamond. We had like two weeks and six days. And we went diamond at the end of that month. And then we went double diamond at the end of the next month, which was, that was a good jump. Um, that was the craziest ride. And I, I wish I could tell you that there was like some secret formula, but in the end, it really comes down to uh, praying, working hard, putting feet on them prayers. And the way that you put feet on those prayers are so smarter, not harder. So we worked hard, but we also got smart about it. We started talking to and literally everyone we had ever known. Um, if somebody's going to get mad at you or reject you, that's okay. They're not the one paying your power bill at the end of the month. They're not the one that's sitting there with you when you're going, dang, I got to pay the mortgage and I don't know where it is right now. Um, so you make the decision that's going to take care of you and your family and the people that you get on your team, you love on them like more than you would your own blood. People that are on our team, <clears throat> if they get a flat tire and they're in another state, they don't have to call road service. I'm coming if I can. So I love on my team a lot. You take care of all of your distributors that you sign up. When you sign up a new distributor, talk to them every day for the first three months. And it doesn't have to be business stuff. Most of the time it's not. It's just life. And you just communicate and love on people. And I think the thing that makes people successful at multi-level marketing, it's the ones that engage and love on people the most. They, they are positive. Like the enters are the most positive people I've seen in the business period. And I, I'm not... I'm not blowing smoke at you guys because we're on this Zoom with you. You're literally the most positive people I've seen in the business. And that type of joy is contagious. People want that. It's contagious, but in a good way. They want that. So it'll jump on people and pull them in. And that is something that we started trying to do from the very beginning. I told Steph, I was like, man, it, you know, I'm, I'm all about the numbers. And Steph kept telling me, but you got to be about the people. You got to be about the people. You got to love the people because that's where it really is. If you build those relationships, when it comes slow time, they're not going to leave. They're going to stay there because they love you. And when she got that switch to flip in my heart and I realized that, it was on like Donkey Kong after that. We started having the most fun. I told her, I was like, you know, I think our goal needs to be to have more fun than any other team ever in the history of any MLM or it works or anything. So we're planning the largest pillow fight in it works history. 
It's going to happen. Pillow fight. I awesome. love it. It's going to be the largest pillow fight in it works history. You wait. Everybody's got to bring their own pillow. <laughs> and we're going to go at it like crazy. Um, we have... We have, I think, 15 people that are working out at the same gym, and we all wear our shirts together. And I'm serious. We're about to convert the entire Planet Fitness here. Yeah. Like, we are. We're about to convert the entire gym. Uh, the manager the came manager up to me and really said, what are you guys doing? And so he wants to come to a party. And I'm like, score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he's going to come to a party. We're going to get the whole staff. So just go around with your people, do life, with and them. love on them, do life with them, and have fun. And your team's just going to grow naturally. So you just let those relationships blossom and your team's going to grow naturally. You know, Gabe, I, I, th- I first it. of all, thank you for the long unedited version of that story. I mean, that, that <laughs> really rocks. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of a couple of points, you know, the point where, where Cammy really touched you guys. I mean, you went in there with your defenses up mm-hmm. and Cammy really touched you and made a connection with you. Mm-hmm. You know, Steph cried. That point hit me. And then the, the next thing I was thinking about is how do these, how do these two, how do they transfer their belief into the team that's, that's, you know, on, on their back, you know, got their back on their side. And then you guys said it just a minute ago here and it's loving on people. It's mm-hmm. loving what you do. It's loving on people. It's making it more fun than it is work. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's yeah. just, it's engrossing people in your story. And, and, you know, Liz and I just had this conversation, like maybe even today. And I said, I said, seriously, it's, you know, it's, it's fantastic that we have an awesome compensation plan that goes along with it works and they're great products. But, but seriously, if we had Mark Pentecost trying to sell washing machine lids and he was doing what he was doing and we were doing what we were doing, having each other's back, having fun, we could literally sell washing machine lids and it wouldn't make a difference. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lids. Yeah. And, and, and I think you guys have hit the nail on the head. Um, I'm reading, um, when with people, uh, how to, how to, um, when with people? yeah, it's by Dale Carnegie. Um, how to win friends or how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. And oh, I've heard of that. I am telling you that book is gold. And that part, what you're talking about, about loving on people that's in there. They said, you might as well not even go to work if you're not going to love on people. And they said, you know, Andrew Carnegie, the most successful man in the steel industry way back when, he was not the smartest man when it came to the steel industry, but he knew how to love on people. And, you know, you guys are going to go straight to the top because you know how to love on people. You know how to have fun. I mean, Gabe, you just you just make me want to be around you all the time. I mean, if we were close, <laughs> I'd definitely be hugging you. But <laughs> you guys have to follow them on Facebook. Like Gabe's video today when they were at the gym with their crew and you were doing double dutch or whatever. <laughs> seconds. I mean, it's, you just go roar. He is so flipping hilarious. It is just, and you do, you just, you just go, I laugh, I smile. When I look at your Facebook page, you know, your walls, I look at what you guys are doing. I'm like, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Who wouldn't want to be a part of that fun? Seriously, like you feel like I'm having the FOMO, the fear of missing out because I'm not by Stephanie. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I know Cammy often says, you know, people don't buy products. They, they buy, buy people. people. And you guys are the, the epitome of that. Like people want to be around you. They, they buy into your story. They buy into the fun and the adventure and the joy that you guys just ooze out of yourselves. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you. So I wanted to ask some more questions. Um, how do you keep inspired every single day? Because, you know, these people on this, this Zoom are emeralds, diamonds moving forward. Some have been on for a long time. They've been in this business for a long time, and they're saying to themselves, man, is there hope for me to go diamond? Is there hope for me to go double diamond? You know, I've been struggling for a while. And then we got some people that are brand new that are, that are, that are not, that, that are, you know, booming and they're going and they're going to pass through this group into the next one as, as fast as, you know, as right. we can speak. But so, so do you guys inspire yourselves daily? What do you do to or, keep or, yourself or, inspired? You know, or do you, do you wait for Cammy to call you and, and uh, <laughs> no. you know, tell it, tell us what a little bit of, of, of the day in the life of, you know, real quick of Gabe and Steph looks like, because I'm guessing that you guys realize kind of like Mark Pentecost says, I've got to protect my heart and my head and I've got to plug into that first. So t- tell me what that yeah. looks like. 
for you guys. Tell them about your hour of power. Um, well, I get up in the morning and I pray first thing. So what always, time you get up? 5.30. <laughs> I pray in the morning, you know, early. I like to get that out of the way. And something that we do to inspire our team every day is um, he prays over our boxer. So he prays over the entire team. And um, I really think that helps encourage them. You know, they look forward to it. If he forgets about it, they're like, um, you haven't prayed. Yeah, about I get it. messages. They're like, you haven't prayed today. Are you like begging now? <laughs> uh, and what's funny is we have like, you know, we're Christians. Not everybody on our team is Christians. No. Uh, we have people on our team that really aren't even kind of religious. Like, totally not. But and we're okay they, with that. We just love. Yeah, them. we just we have we have people from all different. I mean, literally all different walks of life. We probably have one of the most diverse teams on um, on in it works mm -hmm. in reality. Yeah, easily. So we have yeah. an extremely diverse team and, but we're just kind of like, we're just real with them. Yeah, you know, we ask them. them like, what are you doing today? And then everybody responds to what they're doing today uh -huh. or they'll send a funny gift and then they'll have gift wars. Oh. So whatever we do to keep them engaging, that's what, um, I made them make another Facebook messenger group. I was like, you guys keep, <laughs> you keep shooting these gifts to this thing. Oh, you're freezing. Sorry. Oh, okay. Back. Sorry, Wait, can you see us? Still there? Sorry. Her yeah, mom, you're, you're, her you're mom calls us every time we're on a Zoom. I'm like, I think there's an alarm on her phone that goes off when we're on a Zoom. Sorry, I thought I They're actually you. going diamond this month, her parents are, so we're pretty excited about it. Oh, but as far as getting, yeah, I know. We're so fired up. Her brother went diamond last month. Um, awesome. So we, we went um, – I don't know. We went probably about six weeks without getting anyone mm -hmm. before Christmas. I mean, it just got. It was tough. But we made sure to keep, yeah. even if, like, nobody was coming to the parties, we made the team come. Mm -hmm. So we kept, you know, we would turn it into a training or. We had a lot of parties for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we would just have fun at them. But we built such a core group with those people. I, I was joking the other day. Somebody was like, man, you know, my team's kind of shaky. And I was like. I started thinking about it. I was like, man, if there was a war going on and I got stuck in a foxhole, my guys wouldn't leave me. I, I could get shot. They wouldn't leave me. They'd stay there with me. Um, yeah. That's just – that's the core group that we built there during that slow time. When it gets slow, start loving on the ones you got. When it gets really slow, love them more. Bring them into your house. Feed them some cake. Uh, go we to the movies together. Yeah, we, movies. Yeah, I'm telling you, we eat so much junk food as a team. We really got to work on this because we keep – we get fat. <laughs> We just don't look like you're supposed to look in the health and wellness. Team. That's why I was like, okay, people, listen. <laughs> That's listen, why we're going to the you're gym. You're going together. to the gym. We're going to the gym. I wanted everybody to go to Tiger Iron Fitness, which is like this meathead gym. And Steph was like, no, we're going to the purple gym. It's purple, it's yellow. It's called Planet it has Fitness. Free tanning. Yeah, yeah. It has free tanning if you get the black card membership. So we got everybody to go there. But as far as staying inspired, uh, Steph and I talk a lot. Communication is really important between the two of us. Yeah, I think once... communication is what keeps us all inspired. Because yeah. if you're not connecting, then you get stuck with vain imaginations, and we don't want that. If we want let, them to yeah. stay connected and <clears throat> constantly messaging them all the time. And Stephanie is incredible at creating an infrastructure for that. I'm not the guy to create your infrastructure. I'm a big idea, visionary kind of guy. And I'm like, details. The devil's in there. I don't want that. So <laughs> Stephanie's real big on details and administration. She's also really big on seeing the big picture with me. She's really big on executing it. So I'm learning about the details with this business because I've never had to worry about it before. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the most unorganized attorneys. And when I go in the courtroom, I do my performance and everything. And I win cases because of that. So I've never had to worry about details. So she, I've been learning so much from her about i told her i was like it's like god made you to be a ceo or something you're just incredible at this so she built this infrastructure of communication every day it's boxer it's facebook messenger it's texting it's calling and she'll make a list of people hey gabriel these are people i need you to connect with today and it'll be like joe becky sue bob and she's like all of these she's like yeah <laughs> call and love on all of them so i take the list and i go i call everybody i literally call them I'll text them or message them i call them they're at least going to get a voicemail from me yeah. And then I check it off as I go down. So the number one thing that we do is communication. And okay. what's funny is we don't know the business as well as other people. We really don't. There's other people that know about multi-level marketing a whole lot better. This is our very first, first one. one. We've never done one of these. I've never sold a toothbrush. So this <laughs> is all outside of what we know. But what we do know is people. And what we do love is people. And if you're one of ours, we're in it together for life. 
Awesome. Uh, I love it. You guys are you guys are knocking it out of the park. You know what? I do I want to see if there's a question um while we're chatting here from you know from somebody in the group here, uh whether you're a guest or not. Does anybody have a question for, for Gabe and Steph? I you know, really about anything. Something that you're thinking about with your business, um, you know, something to help you grow, um, anything. So somebody think about something there while well, and what I love what you guys said is, you know, really it sounds like you, your family really came into this. Like, you, it sounds like, you know, you said, yeah. Stephanie, your, your dad had a stroke or your grandpa had a stroke? My grandpa. So it sounds like you really, you guys really brought your families into that. And surprisingly, surprisingly, I think you would find a lot of people in this, in, on our team and, and that you hear of is that their family doesn't support them. They, mm -hmm. their family really have a hard time. Their family rather doesn't raise your hand if you don't have your family as distributors or loyal customers you know so I mean there's there's quite a few of us that have that that part and I remember when I started um, I just kind of said I'm gonna go just with people that I knew my groups of people around me and that's how I started to build my business just with people that I knew that were not family so yeah. I love that that your family was very you know in it ready to go uh, believed in it and I know we, we, we've seen you guys at all these events and your family's right with you you know and it's just so <laughs> cool to see you guys all together like that that's just awesome yeah yeah um do you have a question have a no I was just looking at the group here did somebody have a question Maybe have a question for Gabe and Steph I know I saw John had his hand up but I'm not sure if he was asking a question or not and yes I am on hair skin and nails you are on hair skin and nails you're a beautiful <laughs> man man are you still, are you playing your, in your football league? I know you were going to join us. Uh, my surgery ended up setting me back so bad. I had surgery first week of January and it set me back so bad I couldn't play. But my team, I'm like, I don't know, red shirted, I guess. Yeah. But my team is uh, undefeated and they're about to be the national champions in the number one di uh, amateur division in, in the world. So wow. um, I wish I could have been a part of that. <laughs> That's wow. awesome. I am actually, I would much rather be doing this. <laughs> Wow. Oh. So you say, you say you're still doing, you know, you're still a lawyer and you're mm -hmm. still full time at that. So Steph, mm -hmm. you're really full time home with it works, right? You're not doing hair anymore. I do it um, on the side for friends and family, but I don't have to do it um, as a job anymore. And I love it. Okay. So when is your plans, Gabe, to, are you thinking that you'd like to hang up that, that lawyer yeah. job at some point? Oh yeah. I definitely. I hope by the end of the year he can. I want to be retired from the practice of criminal law. I've been in criminal law since I started. Um, I was a prosecutor when I first started out. Mm -hmm. So I was on the other side, which is, uh, that's the story. And when I was a prosecutor, really stressful. Then I left that, never thought I'd be a criminal defense attorney. I opened my own law firm. And the day I stepped out, I started getting criminal cases. Uh, you know, just the weird ones, the tough ones that nobody else wanted. And I got those because of what I had done before. And so I've been in that now for four years, four, four years. years. Yeah, four years. And it is really stressful. Yeah. You get calls at 2.30 in the morning. Um, you get the weird tough cases. So my goal is to be done with that by the end of the year and only do personal injury. And I like personal injury because I can be on a vacation and settle a car at a case. And uh, I like fighting the big insurance companies when they're trying to stick it to my people. I like to call them. That makes <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Pelican Brief guy. Yeah. <laughs> Except not, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Funny. So what, what would you say um, as far as, you know, uh, good, good business building tips? If you were going to offer someone, you know, one or two really good uh, business building tips, what would you offer people? The hundreds list? Yeah, hundreds list and infrastructure. Yeah. Really? Well, what about the DT checklist? Stephanie had this thing that she created that it would be really good for like every everybody. It's called the DT checklist. Do you have a copy of it here? Mm -mm. Okay, well the DT checklist, it has has a specific number of people that you're supposed to message every day that are new people that you've never messaged before. A specific number of people that you're supposed to follow up with. It has a specific number of Facebook posts that you're supposed to post and the types of posts. And then we have a Facebook site that we created where you can go and get those posts if you've never seen them before. So get just to get a your creative system, juices flowing. creating a system yeah. would help. So we have this DT checklist that has like all these different things on it that every distributor, no matter what they're ranked, no matter who you are, mm -hmm. this is what you need to do every day. This is the foundation you lay every day when you get up. I love sure. that. 
Because I feel like <clears throat> when you join this business, you don't have a schedule like you would at a nine to five, and that can throw people off. So they spend a lot of time, you know, surfing Facebook more than they actually, do, like, reaching, actually out. reaching out and messaging. Yeah. And I know that can be that can be distracting sometimes. So if you have a system that's laid out, I really feel that that helps you stick to it. And then a lot of what we do as leaders, I think probably the number one thing that we do now, and we kind of got this from the Walmarts, is we have everybody over at our house. Everybody gets out their cell phone. They get out their iPad. They get out a laptop. <clears throat> whatever device they use to communicate with. Some people bring over their laptops. We line them up around the edge of the living room. And th these are the people we can get. Anyone that can't be there because they're out of state, we're in 17 different states now. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah, I think we are. So we're in at least 14 different states. Those people can't all be here. So they zoom in mm -hmm. and we literally, okay, who have you got? You got a guy named Josh. How do you know Josh? You've been talking to Josh for a while? All right, this is what you need to send. We script it for them. We take the phone out of their hands. And I'll voice to text, put it in, pass it off. Give me your phone. Can we voice to text? Just constantly getting them into the mode of communicating with people. And I will literally make somebody sit down with me. And we'll message 20 people. And then what's funny is the next day they get five replies and they're like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, they can. They get pennies. They actually replied. I'm like, oh, this is a good thing. This is what you want. They want to sign up. Now what? I, I love that. I know how to put them on the website. <laughs> So we walk them through that stuff and that has been huge. That's been a great tool. So if you're a leader, get your people where you can touch them. On a system and yeah. then, yeah, where you can touch them. And do the hundreds list. So those are two tips. I love that. Do the hundreds list. Yeah. Like, I love that checklist. Do what? I love that checklist, guys. Um, you say that's going to be on your Facebook page? Um, no, we actually printed it out and I laminated mine. Because I, I, I'd like to get my hands on that. You know, what I hear... What I hear when you guys are talking about that is is a little okay. something is a little something uh, that that somebody some wise person said before you know kind of about a pilot when a pilot takes off he's got a checklist that he goes over every single mm -hmm. time he takes off and lands before he takes off checklist before he lands checklist it doesn't matter if the guy's been in the business forty years flying he's got a checklist that he goes through so that he doesn't have to think about it and you know quite honestly. I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. This is what Liz and I need the most. We've been in the business three and a half years and we need a freaking checklist so that we know exactly <laughs> what we're doing. I mean, I, I know how to come home and, you know, make coffee and make breakfast, but sometimes I get sidetracked when I need to sit down and I need to know exactly what I need to do in my day or, you know, get my calendar planned out for the entire month. So I love that. I, I definitely want to get my hands on your checklist. I can, um, email it to you yeah. even, even if you even if you uh like took a screenshot of it and sent it to me in a private message okay. right i can just put it into the thread that we're all in and you guys okay. if you want to try it and use it with your teams too would you guys all like that i think we can share it on facebook i think we have a pdf do we have a i don't PDF know if I, but i laminated mine so i can check it off and use it every day because awesome, awesome. she laminates everything that's another thing that we everything. do when it comes time for months in we make all the leaders come to our house or zoom in or we box in. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our really big leaders, her name is Samantha. She's in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. She's going diamond this month. Um, she went Emerald last month. She's going diamond this month. And we've just been really focusing on, on her a lot and a few of the other people. And so what we have everyone do is we make them uh, laminate uh, the uh, what are those things ranks. Called? The ranks, all the ranks with all the boxes. What are those called? Charts? Charts. charts. Yeah, like Emerald charts, diamond charts, all that. We make them laminate them all. <laughs> they love it. Games like I'm a double diamond. What are they called? <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to figure out what this business is. I so love it. We make them go on there, and then they have to write down their BBs, and then as they go, we just flick it, wipe it off, and write in the new BB number. And so yes. we make them screenshot or take and we make them pictures and carry it around with them everywhere. Yeah. So they can constantly update it. If you're on our team and you're a Ruby and you don't have your chart when we call you, that's like. Oh, pa, right there. <laughs> you what? You don't have your It Works bag on you? I can't believe it. Yeah, so that's what we do. That's what we do. I yeah, love it. Man. I love it. If we're in somewhere and my team's not blitzing, that's a weird day. Last night at Planet Fitness, I think we, my team. Everybody was blitzing where they were working out. Yeah, actually. there were people just standing around talking blitzing. We're all wearing t-shirts and they're like, why are there 15 people in here? What works? 
what works? <laughs> what is this? Well, thank you for asking. And I just listen to them as I'm going by, jump in conversations. Yeah. And um, I, love I, I love it. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite things to do. Go to Kroger, go to Walmart, wear our It Works t-shirts, walk around and have people looking at us. As a group, because it draws yeah. more attention. Than walk through yourself. the mall with 10 people and see if you don't get a comment. <laughs> Because it looks like a family reunion t-shirts or something. Right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Like, what cult are you guys with, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <clears throat> rapid cult. <laughs> that is so awesome. Keep going. We're really big on rewarding people that succeed in anything. So we make a big deal out of everything. Everything. You get four little customers, hold on, the world just stops. Mm. Oh, they only all got fat fighters and you've only got like 106 BB? We don't care. <laughs> that's awesome and we're going to tell everybody on facebook about it we're going to make a voxer announcement hey oh, joe geez, just signed up right. uh 29 and a half days ago and everybody needs to freak out right now because he just got his fourth world customer whoa and then everybody freaks out Intensive. it's like it's the first time every time and we awesome. are super big on that cammy taught us that cammy said make a big deal out of everything if you hit 400 pbv in the block we'll buy you a t-shirt we yeah. had to buy a lot of t-shirts last month. I was like, hey, we're not to get that again. We just spent funny. up our profit. I'm just kidding. Not really. But we bought a lot of t-shirts. A lot of t-shirts. I love but it. We wanted all of our people to have t-shirts. And our rule was, hey, if we buy you a t-shirt and we go to an event, we go to the movies, you better be wearing your t-shirt. We go out to eat together, which we do that a lot. Got to be wearing a t-shirt. We have people that can't afford to eat out. Come on, get a water. Sit there. Oh, we don't care. We're family. I awesome. love that. Oh my goodness. How adorable well, are they? You guys. Who has questions? Who has questions? Seriously, you were going to say something? Just, you guys absolutely rocked it tonight. You know, I, it's not that I'm surprised. I mean, you guys brought it. I, you brought the heat. Anybody have questions for these guys? Don't, I have a quick one. There we go. Go oh, on. No, and they look so familiar, and I just figured it out. You're the frozen, the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was her idea. Oh, I loved it. And a lip sync, lip sync challenge on the stage. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm like, why do they look so familiar? I don't know the name. That's what it was. Anyway, um, so do you keep your whole team on one boxer thread? Do you like just do your leaders? You have different legs. Everyone. Everybody's on the boxer now. The messenger group. Yeah, but the messenger group is different legs. You know, like their team, but the boxer is us all together. Awesome. And it literally goes off all day long. But you can mute them. But we, we just, yeah. You just you jump on there, you engage, and they just like to hear mom and daddy's voice. <laughs> so all you get right. on there and you just love on your team. You just be that team leader. And I know that sounds funny. I mean, most I don't know a lot of our team is older than us. Yeah. But they, you, you, you're they the like guy. To if you're the leader, if you're the one that got the guy, that got the guy, that got the guy, that got them in, mm -hmm. you're, you're the mama, you're the daddy. And you got to <laughs> love on them. And that's the way at Voxer, that's what it's all about. People don't need to read your text. They don't need to read your message. They need to hear your voice. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. human. It is the most human thing. And if they can see your face, that's even better. So we do lots of Zooms. But Voxer is awesome because you can be at work. They'll get a little smoke break or something. Whatever they do, they go out <laughs> smoke break. and they listen to the Voxer. Yeah, I'm telling you, we got some team that we really need to work on as far as health. <laughs> Between the cake and the, the pizza and eating out and the smoking? Come on. <laughs> yeah, they do all that. We do not smoke. We don't smoke with them. We don't smoke with them. I tell them that you got to take that mess outside. But <laughs> I was going to say, I'm surprised you don't have one rolled up in your sleeve there, Gabe. <laughs> you know, doing the old school. With the <laughs> yeah. Right behind the ear. Yeah. Right over here. I hide it in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had like a buzz cut three months ago. I started taking hair, skin, and nails, and it's like chia pets. I told her between her head and my head, we're not gonna have kids. We're gonna have chia pets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have another question out there, guys? It. Don't blow this opportunity to Michelle, ask a, ask a question. Yeah, question. Oh, Colleen. Colleen, go. Actually, Megan's busy feeding the babies, so um, I'm asking for both of us. We spent six hours today just um, trying to get Megan's her last couple loyals. Um, she's only been in for 26 days now. Um, okay. And our biggest problem is we are getting those responses of we don't have the money. We can't, you know, we've done the let's pre-sell pre your wraps. 
let's jump on the online party tonight. Let me sell you or send you this um, our opportunity Zoom that we did, and we utilize all of those things that John and Liv John and Liv have um, provided for us and our whole team. But we're getting the we don't have the money. We have to wait, which is fine. But what is your best response to try it? Lock it down. You need to you need to tell her about creating uh, your Facebook um, atmosphere, your the way that you um, reach out to people. So you started increasing your we call it influence. influence. Yeah. So when she started out, Stephanie, I had an okay influence because of what I do. But all of my people are lawyers, and they didn't want to do anything. And her influence was really small. And we had a good influence at our church, but there was a person there that was doing a different business and mm -hmm. turned everyone off our company as quickly as they could. So we just didn't even touch it because we didn't want to poison the atmosphere there. Um, so we ended up losing pretty much all of our influence, which was real difficult for us. So Stephanie said, that's okay. I can create a new sphere of influence. I was like, how? How do you do that? She was like, social media is an incredible platform. So if you go on her wall and look at the way that she has her posts done, it is all about increasing influence. We On our DT checklist, we have a number of people that you have to friend new every day. If your sphere of influence is telling you no a lot, then you need to increase your sphere. So go outside your base. Go outside where you're comfortable. Start friending friends of friends. Start friending people that you haven't friended, that you haven't known in a long time. Mm -hmm. Start liking and commenting on their stuff. All, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. And you will start building a relationship. You can start messaging people. And it may be a month before you get to talk to them about the business. Man, there are some people that I started messaging three months ago. I'm just now bringing up the business. Mm -hmm. But most of the people that you, if you message somebody, Facebook links your walls through the algorithm. I don't know if you know that, but if you message someone, Facebook makes your stuff sort of showing up on their newsfeed. So if you communicate with somebody, like and comment on their walls, your stuff starts showing up. So I would like, comment, like, comment. Steph taught me this. Like, comment, two or three things on their wall, and I immediately, within 10 minutes, I'll go do something that works. Or I'll do some sort of video that's going to make them start paying attention to my, my page. Mm -hmm. And that will increase your sphere of influence. Now, here's the deal. You remember Jocelyn Yates didn't go executive for nine months. Jocelyn Yates, I mean, executive, two legs, born to BB each. She didn't do it for nine months, and she's now, like, the biggest thing out there as far as a young person in the company, especially. Top 30 income earners. I think so. She built that off social media, just liking, commenting, and building relationships. Now, here's the challenge. That takes time. It does. But you have a greater return once you hit the breaking point. And I'm not sure exactly where that is because I haven't hit it yet. But I know that you can, I know that people a hundred years from now, after Facebook starts charging money, is going to be like, can you believe that people used to get on there for free and they didn't utilize that for a business opportunity? People are just going to be astounded that we didn't utilize it more. So start utilizing your social media platforms to increase your sphere of influence. Get an Instagram, learn how to use it. Get a, a Pinterest. <clears throat> we have a guy that is signing people off, off Snapchat. of Snapchat. His name is Daniel Lane. He is the next big thing. Y'all wait. Y'all remember I said it. Daniel Lane. He is signing people off Snapchat. We're going to need to uh, do a video, uh, Gabe. Uh, special guests, you and, and Daniel on Snapchat. But that's going to be another episode. So um, let's see. My question. Okay. So my question being that you guys talked about checklists before. When you guys are talking about increasing your sphere of influence on social media, how, what does that look like as far as keeping track of, you know, say I like and comment on, you know, Bob and Joe and Jane, you know, one day and, you know, do you keep a checklist on that specific person when you talk to them last, you know, how much liking, commenting you did so that you can, you know, cause like if you're on Instagram, it's not exactly that, you know, that person is just gonna, there, there's no way to keep track of it unless you're actually writing it down. Tell me what that looks like. Well, for Instagram, I actually do write it down, the new people that I add, and like I'll put next to it, comment or like on it. But for Facebook, on the DT checklist, I have a space where you can write their name, you know, like 10 people, and it has like a space, write their name. So that way you can keep track of it. So I guess, yeah, you do write it down. Okay. She has everybody write down. And I know that's a lot of work, but it's actually worth it, you know, to yeah. keep track of everybody that way. Right. One oh, thing, oh, one oh, thing oh, that oh, I, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Go ahead. One thing that I started doing on Instagram is I started turn when I when if I find somebody that I really that really sparks my interest, 
um, I've turned on post notifications for that person so that when oh, they okay. when they post I get a message right on my phone and then I can immediately go and like what they put on there and I can comment back so that's, that's, awesome. that's kind of my way of keeping track of a person that I want that I definitely want in my sphere of influence okay I'll have to try that. that. I didn't awesome. know you could do that. Post that notification. So turn turn on post notifications. It's underneath, you know, when you click on their profile or whatever, it's under the three dots. You click on the three dots up top, and it's like the bottom. Uh, there's like six or seven things that you can select, and it's the bottom one. Turn on post notifications. Oh, okay. If you're wanting to keep track of everything that you do on Facebook, go to your activity log, and your activity log will tell you oh, every true. time you liked or commented. So oh, you can see all of that. Okay. It's the best recording device of activity on Facebook. That's true. I didn't think about that. Okay. Good point. Mm -hmm. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I love so this. So you're saying every single day, even a Saturday and a Sunday, you guys chat with your teams and what's going on and what's That's everybody true. doing? Honestly, we don't go an hour without communicating with somebody on the team because mm -hmm. we noticed in the very beginning the people who were losing, like, getting discouraged, you know, because getting rejection after rejection after rejection is hard. And um, so if you stop engaging, then you start losing them. So the way to keep them is to constantly talk to them all the time. Like, hey, what are you doing? Let's go get coffee. Let's go to dinner. You know, like just constantly talking to them. She meets with all the girls every Tuesday morning that want to come. So they bring out their little planners. She got them all to get planners. Yeah. She meets with all of the girls every Tuesday morning. I'm a planner. And I do, um, like, if I'm going to the movies – and you're on my team you're, you're getting an invite <laughs> you're if you don't come we're gonna be like bro come on man come on you know, you're gonna get ragged so if you're a dude you're on the team and captain america 3 is coming out you're going to the movies with me the whole movie staff knows about our it works team mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um, we do everything we get and i'm the guy that open carries in the theater so they definitely remember yeah, <laughs> i see yes. that you totally wear yes, your gun does. where everybody can see it i'm like gabe I might be a little freaked out if I was by you. Like, he's got a gun. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, I remember the manager came over one day and was like, uh, sir, I noticed you're carrying a gun. Are you in law enforcement? I was like, no, I'm not. I'm a Second Amendment rights attorney, so I practice constitutional law. So we started talking a little bit. I said, you know, if you want me to take it off, I'll take it off. I'll go out to the car, you know, no fuss. He was like, no, you know what? You keep that gun on. So ever since then, the whole theater staff knows me because he told them all, hey, you leave that guy alone. So now it's like it works. It's getting even more press time. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Do we, you know what, guys? We're actually over the hour already. Does anybody else have a question that they want to ask yet before we let these fantastic peeps go? I wanted to tell you something else about um, the laminating the charts is when you're out blitzing. If you have a Ruby block open, like for the bonuses, you can show them, hey, I could place you here, and they could actually see where they're going to go. We've had people sign people up by showing them the charts. On the chart, it actually has a red block for Ruby, mm -hmm. and we always say, we have a Ruby block open. You want to be in the Ruby block? And they're like, oh, the Ruby block. What is this Ruby block? Yeah. So it's also you like, do you mean like new kids on the block or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is so hilarious. You, you call know, it the Ruby Block? So smart. Oh, yeah. That's so yeah, smart, guys. Find people off that, like waitresses and stuff, are like, hey, oh, yeah. we have a Ruby Block open, and that's $500 bonus. And they're like, really? Ruby Block? That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah once they get in business, they're like, so anyone can be a Ruby. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious. You guys are so smart. You don't even, that's, that's, that's that great. is hilarious. I love that. Oh my goodness. Who else has a question? Becky, I think I saw your hand up. Okay. So my question is, have you ever had new distributors come on that are just like, I don't remember what the term is. Gabe, I know I've watched some of your videos. I can't remember what you call them. But they, like, just sit there. They don't, like, you help them get their first few loyal customers, and they're not active. So what do you guys do if you have someone that's like that, and they're not local? Yeah. Well, one thing that Gabriel says is uh, the vision is caught, not taught. Yeah, you got to catch that vision. They got to catch that vision. 
And um, you can't teach it to them. Mm -hmm. They got to catch it. Uh, but another it. thing that I do is I give them a job. Like sometimes they just feel useless. So like I'll have them in charge of like birthdays of the group. And so that will help them, you know, stay connected. Like give them something so they have some sort of ownership. And that helps the people that aren't working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, Stephanie is real big on plugging people in. So mm -hmm. like we had this one girl that wasn't doing anything and she's out of town and she couldn't come to anything because she's too far away. She was really, really shy. Like, I try, man, how do I say it? Her social skills sucked. I don't know how else to say that. She just really struggled. I mean, yeah. talking to people that she actually liked was hard for her. Yeah. So talking to someone she didn't know was really a challenge. And uh, and I pick on her a little bit about that. So I'm like, you know, I'm breaking you out of your shell. It's all about taking those people that aren't leaders and training them. A good leader, I'm sorry, a leader, just an average leader will have followers, but a really good leader makes other leaders. So we really work on making other leaders out of our, out of our people so that they can go and, and duplicate that. And one of the things that Stephanie does to help train and build leaders is she will give them a task. So this girl, she told her, hey, I want you to go and get all the birthdays and anniversaries of every single distributor on the team, which at that time there was over 20 of them. So she went and got the birthdays and mm -hmm. anniversaries of every single one of them, created a Facebook messenger, and every time there's a birthday or an anniversary on the team, she, she knows it. Mm -hmm. She's got it on her calendar. She gets on there, hey, so-and-so, uh, you know, it's your birthday today. Everybody get excited for so-and-so, it's their birthday. That's her task. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to blow her away and give her anything crazy, but we have people that but all that, they do is do online parties. That's, that's helped her get out of her comfort zone. And like tonight, she's going to sign her first distributor. So sometimes they just lack confidence. Mm -hmm. And so by giving them a job, it helps. And building that confidence, a lot of that is going to come from encouragement. Mm -hmm. And in some people, you have to literally hold their hand. So you got to give them that DT checklist. And you got to call them and you got to say, hey, did you do your DT checklist today? Yeah, like what number are you on? And one of the best things that we use for people, anytime somebody comes to us and they go, well, the business just isn't working for me. It's just not working out. Did you do your DT checklist? Because if you didn't do your DT checklist, you can't complain. Mm -hmm. You just can't. I love that. Oh, my goodness. We, you guys are like, seriously, I'm writing all this stuff down. And I'm like, Could you just, <laughs> can we just keep you all night long? <laughs> Like, this is so good. I love that. Give your people jobs. Give everybody a job. And I love that. The birthdays and anniversaries, how cute is that? That's important, <laughs> I love too. celebrations. <laughs> every day on our team is a party. It every, really is. Every Everything day is a party. party. It's awesome. You know, and, and don't forget, guys, too, that, you know, for as much as Gabe and Steph are talking about breaking someone out of their shell by giving them a task to do, like, birthdays and anniversaries, the people that are getting the – um, acknowledgement of the birthday or the anniversary mm -hmm. guys that's huge mm -hmm. in that book that I'm reading you know with Dale Carnegie he talks about just remembering a person's name is worth so much because really honestly at the end of the day when a person hears their name especially from a person that they don't necessarily know it's the top of the top it's the top of flattery to remember a person's name let alone their birthday or anniversary. Because, you know, let's face it, when you get to be my age, not a lot of people remember your birthday. But when, <laughs> when, you're, when your car salesman goes out of his way to write a handwritten card, mm -hmm. and you know that that's coming in the mail, I guarantee you that that car salesman is going to get my business in the future. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So think about that with your loyal customers. I love that with thinking about that with your, your with your team. What a way to lock in um, friendships for a lifetime. I just love how you said if I'm going to the movies, I'm, I'm messaging them. If we're going out to eat, you know, instead of just going by yourself, all right, guys, on the team, I'm going out. This is where I'm going to be. Will you guys join me? Let's party okay. together. And that's so awesome. Like everybody wears their It Works gear. And it's true. People are going to be, especially if you guys are in a small town, like we have a bigger yeah. – we live in a small town, but where we do our, most of our stuff and our shopping is in a bigger town. But people definitely know we used to go blitzing all the time at the mall and they used to kind of stop us and tell us to get out of the mall because they knew we were coming to <laughs> hand out coupons. So that was kind of a, but I love that. I just love that so very, very much. Like I'm, my, my, uh, my mind is really, my wheels are turning now. Mm -hmm. love that. Good. Awesome. What do you guys have? Any, any last things like a question for them? And then they, we gotta let these poor people go. It's, it's month end. 
Yes. Great One second. last thing. Do y'all ever do customer retention? That's the big thing we're learning right now is more customer retention. Y'all guys probably know more about that than us. That's just the thing that we've been learning like crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you mean like just making sure that you're you're uh, checking in with them and see how you mean that way when you're saying retain yeah. your loyals? The average lifespan of a customer and it works is 5.25 months. So about five months and one week. And we are doing our best to make sure that the average lifespan of our customers is forever. Yeah. So we, we talk to them all the time. And send them thank you guys. We also make videos for them that just say, hey, you're our little customers. We love you. If it wasn't for you, none of this would happen. We show yeah. them a video. I don't know if they watch them or not, but they get them. And they like coming to our parties too, yeah. even though they're little customers, right? The little customers like to still come to the parties because they like to party. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I get, you know, you can send out, like I'm having a lady, this is going to cost me some money, but at my level, we're having a lady make some postcards for us and we're having a picture of our family. And then over the top, she said, what do you want it to say? And it's just going to be a, a total gratitude. Thank you so much for being a loyal customer of ours. This is the first time we've done this. I mean, I've done yeah. handwritten, but, but it's also going to say what they have, what they've allowed us to do, what their support by buying products and and the money and just just totally supporting us we're listing out the things that we have been able to do because of them because i think people again they buy people not products and when they know where our vision is where we want to go what we've been able to do what they've allowed us to do how can somebody not want to be a part of something like that to continue to share that with others refer others so this postcard isn't going to be like a like a refer, you know, it's not going to be like a coupon or anything. It's going to be absolutely a thank you so much, total gratitude. And this is what you've allowed us to do over these past three and a half years. And so um, we're excited about that. And we're going to, you know, you could do that yourself. You don't have to have, have, some, have somebody make that for you. Um, you could print that yourself, but we're having ours done. And I'm excited to see what she comes up with. So keep talking. I want to get, I want to get one thing. I want to read something out of this book to you guys. <laughs> He's out. Um, but yeah, yeah, retaining your loyals, they are the lifeblood of our business. So man, we got to always be thinking of ways to, to always engage with our loyal customers. I think sometimes we forget about that. I think that is definitely, we, we focus more about getting distributors sometimes and forget about the, the lifeblood. And that is the volume. We can't survive without our volumes. We can't even stay at our levels and move on to new levels without really um, you know, doing that. And I know we just opened up a Facebook loyal customer page, um, where we asked our loyal customers if they'd like to be a part of that Facebook page. And we're, you know, we'll, we'll invite them and we'll share things about products and we invite them on Zooms we have, invite them on parties that we're doing, whatever. Uh, and so that's been kind of cool to do that too. But I still think that handwritten thing, like group stuff is awesome, but I think at the end of the day, it is that, that boxer message or it is that handwritten card, that one-on-one -on -one saying that we really care for you and, and what can we do for you and how are things going? <laughs> Sorry, John's like, okay. show, show them the book that you're so talking about. Here's the book right here. How to win friends, to win and, friends influence and influence people. people. Okay. okay, so here's, here's just a quick, a quick deal out of here. Um, let's see. At the end, at the end of the interview, the person who had talked to him felt felt that he had that he had had his say. Self evident, isn't it? You don't wait. This is it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Um, you don't have to study for four years in Harvard to discover. Yet I know that you know department store owners who rent expensive space buy their goods economically, meaning they get a good deal when they buy their goods, so they're good there, press their windows appealingly, spend thousands of dollars in advertising, and then hire clerks, or DTs in this case, who haven't the sense to be good listeners. Clerks who interrupt customers, contradict them, irritate them, and all but drive them out of their store. Hmm. This is so applicable to what you guys are talking about, to what we're talking about here tonight. Um, Gabe, you started off, you know, loving on people, being a good listener, um, not ramming it works down their throat first chance you get. We just met a gal the other night. Liz and I were shopping together, and this, this gal was actually a realtor, and she had loaded up her cart, and she was like, Staging. She, She's gonna stage she, actually, house. she actually needed a periscope to see over the top of her cart. It was so full and she was knocking stuff over and, and Liz got down, you know, on her knees and, and it was, she's like, don't worry about it. I'll pick it up for you. And 
you know what? We had a great conversation with this girl. She actually asked us what, who we were and, and what we did for work or business. So it works came up all by itself that way. We didn't ram it down her throat. We didn't say, here's a coupon, but we got her information. We friended her on Facebook. And what did she say back to you? She messaged me this morning and just said, well, first of all, I told her, I said, you know, it was so awesome to bump into you and, and just have a great, hilarious how you knocked over this and that or whatever. It was so fun to meet you or whatever. And then she messaged back. She said, um, man, you know, I always am looking for people like you to, to surround myself that are in my sphere. She called it or whatever. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, that's just so very interesting. Cause I said, that's exactly, we're always looking for like-minded people too that just, she was, she just had an awesome aura about her and we just connected right there. And so we just kind of sit back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just, I, you know, I can't stress enough and you know, Liz and I, so at the end of the day, we, we go back and we take apart our day and we, we talk about how we talk to her or how we dealt with people. How do we deal with, because you know what, expect, and I don't even want to call them problems in your day, but expect um, things that are going to stretch you because mm -hmm. that's the way you're going to grow. And then yeah. just make sure that you're dealing with the things that stretch you in the most loving possible way you can. And at the end of the day, if you do that, man, you're, you're going to, you're going to be in such a great place. And I'm not just talking financially. You're going to be influencing people. You're going to have you're going to have true friends around you. And that's really what this book is all about, how to win friends and influence people. So I would strongly recommend getting that book if you haven't read it. I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a slow reader. Um, I'm halfway through it. I've been at it a while. But I underline, I, I highlight, I take notes as I'm going through. Um, so that's my two cents on that. <laughs> that's awesome i'm reading reading layered leadership right now get that one next and read it. bob goshen yep. we know that one yeah, awesome. i think we got that one we went diamond we love that bob goshen oh, yeah. awesome it's really having an impact on me it is it is so leadership is definitely mindset too that's for sure awesome. any other last thoughts guys otherwise i'm going to close it with a, a short devotion that i found that i thought was really awesome and gabe's a really good uh guy for prayer so i'm probably going to ask him to, to close us up with an awesome prayer him and I, we were, we were boxing back and forth about month end stuff. And uh, I just said, I'll be praying for you. And then all of a sudden, Gabe's praying for me, actually. On <laughs> I was like, he's totally praying for me. Well, That's I, so I awesome. Not just saying I'll pray yeah. for you. He's like praying for me. <laughs> I love that. I think that's just awesome. Okay, so this one is, uh, this is be patient and trust God. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Psalm 37, verse 7. The biblical principle here is when you learn to be more patient, you'll make the world and your heart a more peaceful and less stressful place. Psalm 37, 7 commands us to wait patiently for God. But as busy people in a fast-paced world, many of us find that waiting quietly for God is difficult. Why? Because we are fallible human beings seeking to live according to our own timetables, not God's. In our better moments, we realize that patience is not only a virtue, but it is also a commandment from God. We human beings are impatient by nature. We know what we want, and we know exactly when we want it. Now, but God knows better. He has created a world that unfolds according to his plans, not our own. As believers, we must trust his wisdom and his goodness. God instructs us to be patient in all things. We must be patient with our family, our friends, our associates, and ourselves. We must also be patient with our creator as he unfolds his plan for our lives. And that's as it should be. After all, think how patient God has been with us. And it says patience is the companion of wisdom. So Gabe, can you, can you uh, close us out in prayer? I sure can. Thank you. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to join together. And Lord, I thank you for the enters and their whole team. God bless them all, every single one of them. Lord, I pray success over them. I pray, God, that you would give the enters everything that is in their heart. Lord, I pray that you would give them success in every area, Lord, not just the company, but in relationships, business, finance, uh, spiritual growth, everything. Lord, I thank you for them, and I just want to leave your words and your peace on them and in them. And I pray for every member of their team, every person that's under the sound of my voice. God, go into their hearts, change mold, 
and mature, grow in every area of these people. And I pray that they would succeed. God, I pray that word, success. That has been my word for six months, success. I pray that these people would be successful. Ones that have never been successful, show it to them, make it tangible, make it palpable, put it in front of them every day. Lord, I pray that they would not turn loose of this thing, Lord. They'd be like Jacob when he got his name changed, and they would just grab a hold of this thing and wouldn't quit. So, Lord, I praise you for this time. I pray that you would bless it. I thank you for this company. We pray for our leaders in this company, Lord, that you would bless, protect, and grow them, protect their families, protect their finances, protect their minds, protect their hearts, or will their emotions, everything about them. Guard it and keep it safe. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, and that you would guard us all. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. amen you make me tear up <laughs> thank you gabe you guys seriously you and steph that was incredible that was an incredible over an hour hour and a half it didn't even feel like it, it felt like 10 like minutes yeah. so i promised you that i would uh we would reciprocate so we will uh come on one of your team things too and yes. we'll be happy to share uh what we know too so we're, we're very be like we got triple diamonds <laughs> 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 when is your guys's time ta timetable you think and i know god has his but what is your guys's goal for um triple we well, are we're really shooting for about 60 days from the end of this month we had last month we said 90 days at the end of this month we're gonna have our diamond is gonna have a diamond under them but our diamond is not double diamond we gotta get another emerald beside the diamond Which then we've got times? another person named sam she's on our top line she's going diamond and then we have one other person that has about five distributors under them and we're really working with them on their growth to get to diamond in 60 days so once they hit diamond we'll be triple mm -hmm. and that is that is god moving doing things that's growing leaders that's practicing layered leadership awesome yeah. and you will get there you will for sure get there with your guys's hearts god bless you guys with too. your faith with your you know just uh you guys are so inspiring you have no idea well thank, thank you, you. <laughs> we appreciate it yeah seriously you guys gotta follow on facebook they're the cutest ever we say that all the time. You guys are the cutest ever. Thank, so thank you for your time. We value it so much. We really appreciate all that you did to pour into our team. So. Well, thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for having us on. Thank you. And you guys Thanks, have a guys. great night. I'll get the recording up and Gabe and Steph, I can get, send it to you guys too. All right. Yeah. yeah that'd be awesome. You. Awesome. Have a great night guys. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Love y'all.